From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Governor Doug Ducey met with Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen at the border today to tour the progress of the wall. We're at the San Luis Port of Entry with the latest. Teachers continue to demonstrate a walk-in for the fifth week in a row for higher pay, and voting continues for a potential walkout. And overcoming obstacles through sports. How one Arizona school is using athletics to help their students find success outside of their community. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Adriana Vealva. And I'm Troy Lynch. Thank you for joining us. Today, Governor Doug Ducey and Secretary of Homeland Security Kirsten Nielsen checked in on military efforts at the U.S.-Mexico border. This was a two-part border tour for Nielsen. Before heading to San Luis, Arizona, Kirsten Nielsen visited the port of entry in El Centro, California. Uh, we're continuing to work in great partnership with the border governors, uh, but I think the president's been clear that until we can have operational control of the border, uh, which in part means getting resources and working with Congress to close some of those legal loopholes, the National Guard will be here supporting the, the men and women of DHS. The previous administration has ignored the, the border issue in, in Arizona for, for years. We do embrace this decision. I don't think that this should surprise anyone. Governor Doug Ducey committed 338 members of the Arizona National Guard to assist Border Patrol agents earlier this month. Texas, New Mexico and California are also part of Operation Guardian Shield. Nielsen says there are currently 1,000 troops deployed along the border. We asked a spokesman for the Arizona National Guard why Texas seemed to mobilize more quickly in this effort. Texas has a lot more money than Arizona, right? They have oil, they have things like that. I'm assuming that's where the resource is coming from. But after Operation Phalanx, when that uh, federal mission got turned off, um, they paid to have their own. So that's why uh, they kind of had that early start, or what appeared to be an early start. So you had to start from scratch, right? Right, whereas we didn't have any soldiers that were up and operating. So we had to start from scratch. And if you think about how quickly we mobilized the soldiers we did, it was, it was pretty rapid. Nielsen also said the Trump administration is concerned that sanctuary cities are turning their back on federal laws and making it that much more difficult and dangerous to protect Americans. It was just three weeks ago that President Donald Trump tweeted that DACA is dead after months of negotiating. But a group of House members disagrees and say they have a plan to salvage a vote on the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. Cronkite News reporter Austin Bundy has details from our Washington Bureau. Deadline after deadline has gone by for the House to act on a replacement for the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Act. But a bipartisan group of lawmakers said this morning they're fed up with waiting and plan to force a vote on the issue. California Representative Jeff Denham, the Republican spearheading the proposed, quote, Queen of the Hill rule, said enough is enough and that the American public is demanding action. We're all coming together and saying it is time to have a full debate in front of the American public and let the entire country decide. New Mexico Representative Michelle Lujan Grisham, chairwoman of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, said the move has overwhelming bipartisan support. We have 237 members of the House. 237, plenty. So why we don't have the opportunity to have a vote doesn't make any sense that we're not moving forward a legislative solution for dreamers. The so-called Queen of the Hill rule would force four immigration proposals to the House floor, where they would be debated and voted on in turn. The bill with the most votes wins. Denham said he is confident the maneuver will get the attention of Speaker of the House Paul Ryan and President Donald Trump, if nothing else. I think today this announcement will not only catch the president's attention, you know, he continues to tweet on this topic. I think he will see that there is a, a renewed effort between both parties to come together on this. In Washington, Austin Bundy, Cronkite News. Lawmakers would not say when they plan to formally introduce the rule. The Senate tried a similar approach in February, but none of the three bills considered by the senators won enough votes to pass. Red for Ed walk-ins continued this morning on day two of the walkout voting process. Reporter Gabriela Becerra went to Valley Schools where teachers are pushing for support staff to be included in Governor Doug Ducey's 20 by 2020 plan. 
They can't support their families, but they love to teach. Some Red for Ed supporters aren't happy with Governor Doug Ducey's proposed plan because it doesn't include a pay increase for support staff. Tessa Ringo, who is the mother of two students at Villa Montessori School, says the potential walkout could affect her son, who needs in-school occupational and physical therapy. My child is a special needs student. He requires not only his in-classroom teachers, but a full SPED department as well as a one-on-one -on -one to just get through his day. Despite the possible setback, Ringo understands what teachers are asking for and supports the movement. Being more pay for teachers is going to do nothing but offer our children a better education and it funds the future. The school year is almost over and a walkout could have repercussions on the students, especially graduating seniors. Pamela Simon, a teacher at Bioscience High High school says the walkout would not be great for students right now, but it could change the future of education in Arizona. We either think short term or we think long term. Short term is we don't want our kids to be pushed back on their graduation date. Long term is we've already been living like this for over a decade. How much longer are we going to wait and allow education to crumble in Arizona? Save Our Schools Arizona released a statement today saying they do not support the 20 by 20 proposal. Communications Director Don Penish Thacker says they originally thought the plan would be a step in the right direction, but the details don't support it. It turns out this is not a sustainable or predictable revenue source. In Phoenix, Gabriela Becerra, Cronkite News. Voting will end tomorrow, and Arizona Educators United Noah Carvella says the results will be announced on Friday, along with details if the walkout does happen. Some school districts have already announced that their plan if a walkout were to happen. Mesa School District says if teachers were to stage a long-term walkout, they would continue to receive paychecks, but short-term contracts and hourly employees like bus drivers and custodians would not be compensated. Any potential walkout could also mean all district schools would be closed after school programs would be canceled with the exception of varsity level sports such as practice competition and tournaments volunteers would be needed for prom and graduation would be held as planned but diplomas would be withheld until requirements such as course completion and attendance are met teachers themselves are saying no to governor doug ducey's 20 by 2020 plan reporter nicole gutierrez brings us an inside look to a classroom with a teacher who could receive an expected pay raise although teachers say a pay raise would be beneficial some believe that the pay raises should go to everyone on campus including the support staff and those in the classroom I'm a second grade teacher. I have a son and a daughter that go to public schools. This is not a game for me. This is my children's life. This is my profession. When it comes to our kids, we must never stop working for them. One way we work for our kids is by rewarding our teachers. Teachers like Alexis Aguirre says a teacher's raise doesn't solve the education crisis they're fighting for. What we're focused on right now is having comprehensive educational funding reform because teacher salaries are just one symptom of the crisis in Arizona. The crisis is not just teacher salaries. The crisis is educational funding for our public schools. Along with the increase in teachers pay, Ducey says there will be funding for school resources. A plan Aguirre hopes Ducey upholds. We don't have buses. Our schools are crumbling. We don't have ACs that work. We don't have the materials we need to provide successful lessons for our students. But as a teacher with a contract, Aguirre says there's only so much she can say. As a parent, you can say things that we could never say as teachers. Parents and voters are our biggest allies in this. Aguirre hopes that Ducey revises a plan he proposed to include an increase of pay for school staff too. We cannot run the school by ourselves as teachers teachers. If all of our support staff was to call in or not to be here at school, the school would have to shut down. Ms. Aguirre, who's a teacher at Encanto Elementary School, says that she hopes Governor Doug Ducey reevaluates his proposal and addresses not only the teachers, but the support staff and the students in a sustainable way. In Phoenix, Nicole Gutierrez, Cronkite News. The expected average salary of a teacher in the state by 2020 is $58,000. In just under a week, voters in Arizona's 8th Congressional District will go to the polls to choose a new Congresswoman. The race between 
Republican Debbie Lesko and Democrat Haral Tipernini is just one example of the surge in women candidates this year, as Cronkite News reporter Ariana Bustos reports from our Washington bureau. It's not just Arizona, but across the country. In the two-year period between 2015 and 2016, 920 women contacted the advocacy group EMILY's List to say they were interested in running for office. Since then, the number has exploded to more than 36,000. Tucson City Council member Regina Romero is one of those women. Many more women are seeing ourselves as uh, candidates and as elected officials and as policymakers. Romero was one of six finalists for the Gabrielle Giffords Rising Star Award by Emily's List to celebrate women in state or local office. Illinois Cook County State's attorney Kim Fox, the winner of the Rising Star Award, said she thinks the growth of women interested in running is a result of a tense political climate. The rising that we've seen out of dark times has come from from a collection of people who recognize that we can only do better together. Emily's List supports Democratic candidates like Representative Kirsten Sinema in her bid for the Senate seat being vacated by Senator Jeff Flake and Hiral Tipernini in her race for the 8th District House seat. The organization calls Sinema one of the best chances to flip a Senate seat from red to blue. But Stephanie Shriok, president of Emily's List, said she wished the organization could have gotten involved to support Tipernini sooner. As we look at these seats, and we look at the viability of the race in and of itself. And you know, this congressional district, not exactly a swing district, right? Romero, a Democrat, says she supports women running for office, but not all of them. We need to make sure that when we are saying let's elect more women, we need to also add the caveat um, that it's more women with the right policies. Reporting from Washington, Adriana Bustos, Cronkite News. Imagine if a doctor could predict what your health may look like years from now. That technology is not as far away as you may think. Coming up on Cronkite News, we show you the future of health care. Plus, Arizona's growing population is thanks to our neighbors to the west. Why California residents are making Arizona their home. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. With the ability to collect and store large amounts of healthcare data, researchers may be able to predict disease before it happens. Panelists at the Association of Healthcare Journalists Conference talked about technology trends and the benefits for patients. One trending technology is telemedicine. This includes virtual doctor's visits that are more affordable and available. Another one is using artificial intelligence to predict future disease or illness in a patient. Data can be collected through medical devices, wearable, wearables like an Apple Watch or a Fitbit. One of the advantages of medical devices become wearables is that now that information that typically a medical device might transmit several times a day, it's now transmitting that information continuously. Arizona's population continues to boom and many of those new residents are coming from California. Reporter Micah Bledsoe is in Orange County and tells us why some companies and residents have traded beaches for the desert. IAC Industries, a manufacturing company based in Brea, recently packed everything up and moved its business and some employees to Goodyear. Mainly, it was for the longevity of the company. So long story short is the commercial property cost in California versus the commercial property cost in other states. As California becomes more expensive, businesses and residents are looking for a more affordable lifestyle. For many companies, particularly if you don't have a huge amount of capital, Arizona makes much more sense. 
Arizona officials have lobbied California companies for years to move to Arizona to relocate or expand in the Grand Canyon state. For some companies like Tuft & Needle, Uber, and Yelp, it has paid off. Residents have followed suit. From 11, 2011 to 2016, we actually have seen about 100,000 uh, people uh, left California to Arizona. And Arizona is ranked in uh, the top three states, uh, behind Texas and Nevada. Way, an economist with the California Association of Realtors, said as housing costs go up, more people will leave. Average rent has gone up in California by about 80 percent, but income has only gone up by about 36 percent. Kakin refers to those leaving California as equity refugees. As you get older, your big concern is going to be, how do I keep my equity at a high enough level so that I can live off my savings? Reporting in Orange County, Micah Bledsoe, Cronkite News. IAC is currently looking for workers to fill 30 positions at their new Goodyear location. You've heard of patents for inventions and other products. But have you ever heard of a seed patent? Coming up on Cronkite News, we talk to the Rocky Mountain Seed Alliance to see why ignoring regulations may be the key to saving plants. And what a beautiful day on this ride your bike to work day, but changes in the air. Stay tuned to see what will be blowing into our state. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. Join us each weekday at 5.30 and 10 as we bring you the top newsmakers who impact the state. We cover the stories in depth that shape and affect our local communities, and we take the time to ensure that all voices are equally heard. For more than 30 years, Arizona Horizon has been your voice and your source for what matters most, right here on Arizona PBS. I'm Matt Berry, ESPN Sports Center anchor and graduate of ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. With its bachelor's and master's degrees in sports journalism, the Cronkite School is preparing the next generation of sports journalists to tell stories that matter, stories that excite, inspire, and inform. Cronkite immerses students in covering sports at all levels in one of the country's top sports markets. It's this hands-on experience under the guidance of award-winning sports media veterans that shape the top journalists of tomorrow. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people. To see those kids drink clean water for the first time, it's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. Planting seeds and reusing them is a technique that's been around for over 10,000 years. But one Arizona group says that this kind of sustainable farming may be threatened by modern seed, seed companies. The Rocky Mountain Seed Alliance is a group that promotes seed saving among farmers, gardeners, and others. I challenge you to find something you can put in your hand that will do more than a seed. Saving seeds is the practice of reusing planted seeds. In a sense, it's a ritual to help plants carry on throughout um, a life cycle and so that we can select the best of them, save them, and then plant them again. But in some states like Arizona, saving and sharing certain seeds requires a license if the seed is patented and owned by a seed company. We can never breed great crops again because the parts we need are owned and patented by different companies now. The Rocky Mountain Seed Alliance See the says that regulating seeds hurts local farmers as well as the future of food. It's a delusional you know, behavior to think that we can control nature and profit off it in this way and actually survive. The alliance encourages people to ignore seed patents. The best thing you can do is to save seed, share seed, and violate the patents because you're helping farmers around the world. Marla Guggenheimer teaches gardening and nutrition at Killip Elementary School. Saving seeds is really an act of resistance, and I think that's a really important concept to take forward with me. In Flagstaff, Noelle Lilly, Cronkite News.
The Rocky Mountain Seed Alliance hosts workshops and classes all throughout the western United States. Today was a beautiful day out, but looks like tomorrow we might get some winds and that's uh -huh. right, Troy and Adriana. Yeah, it's right now quite chilly this morning, but we've warmed up nicely. Our temperatures today were actually 10 degrees above the temperatures we experienced yesterday. And Flagstaff actually started out at only 32 degrees this morning, but they've warmed up nicely to 61 degrees as their high today. Along the rim, Sholo had a high of 68 degrees. And over in the Colorado River Valley, Lake Havasu City, Quartzsite, and Yuma were all in the low to mid 80s. And down south, Tucson, was our hot spot of the state at 85 degrees. And currently here in Phoenix, we're sitting at 84 degrees, but come 6.40 p.m. when the first pitch is thrown at the D-backs versus Giants game, we're looking at 80 degrees with uh, clear skies and the roof will be open. And come tomorrow, a storm system will be pushing through the state, bringing with it breezy conditions. And um, we will remain in the 80s until Sunday when we're reaching 94 degrees and cloudy skies. And due to these dry and warm temperatures, our state has been put on a wildfire watch and fire, advi fire advisories have been put in place, such as no campfires, no fireworks or smoking, and please don't drive on the dry grass. Reporting for the Cronkite Weather Team, I'm Nicole Randock. Oftentimes, students in small towns are underestimated and overlooked. Yeah, coming up on Cronkite News, how one school in Arizona offers their students a chance for success outside of their community through athletics. the taboo and debate the tough questions with some of the most interesting minds in the game. I'm Carlos Watson, Electrifying Conversation, Friday, only on PBS. For many students in rural areas of our state, access to higher education can be a challenge. But an Arizona high school is changing that through athletics. We traveled to Rio Rico High School where students are finding success beyond their small town. Every day begins and ends like this. For Carlos Villarreal, running is his motivation. These legs have taken him from Mexico all the way to the University of Arizona, where he's one of the fastest on the school's cross-country and track team. Villarreal was born in Mexico. His parents moved to the U.S. when he was six, wanting to give him a better education, but Villarreal says he remembers the challenges. The toughest part for me was having to learn English. It was definitely tough because I could not communicate with a lot of the kids at school. But school became his haven and running his salvation. It was here at Rio Rico High School where Carlos became the athlete he is today. The school is just a marathon's distance run from the Mexican border. Athletic Director Jonathan Chavez says their location in a rural area means they're often underestimated. You know, the, you know, joke from across the state is, what, what do you guys feed? What do you guys feed feed your kids in Rio Rico? What do you guys? What do they drink in Rio Rico? The kids are kids. If you develop those programs and you have the right coaches in place and you have the right people on the bus and they're all going the right direction, then you know anything's possible. Beyond athletics, the coaching staff here helps students in the classroom too, helping them achieve their goals outside of this small community. We just believe that our kids, despite being rural and um, a little bit removed from, from some of the bigger universities, um, that they're more than capable of doing it if they just have the right guidance. That guidance has led over 50 Real Rican athletes to pursue a college career since the school opened in 1996. Oscar Amaya also found running was his ticket to a university, 
Coached by Shadler at Rio Rico, he's now a track and cross country runner at Arizona State. He tried to push me and my teammates to, to email coaches, to email universities, you know, so we can expand our horizons and not just stay in our town. Amaya also came to the U.S. from Mexico without speaking a word of English. He attended school in the U.S. while his parents lived in Mexico. It was still really weird to live somewhere else in someone else's house and not be able to see my parents every day. So, I mean, it was a tough experience experience, but, you know, I made it. <laughs> and he's not finished yet. He's working toward getting into shape for a busy cross-country season. Villarreal is already breaking records at U of A, running a mile in under four minutes. Their legs taking them far from the country they were born and down a successful path, all thanks, they say, to the support, training and encouragement they received at Rio Rico. They're all very supportive because they know how hard it is to make it out of like a community that's so small. Everyone just sort of rallies around that and supports getting out of high school, like go above and beyond and that's just a great community to be a part of. Our full multimedia report will be coming to cronkitenews.azpbs.org tomorrow. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, we'll ask Democratic state legislative leaders about the governor's proposed hike in teacher pay. And we'll take a look at the Valley's real estate market. That's the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour. Who is Michael Cohen? A deep dive into the business of one of President Trump's lawyers. That's Tuesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.